Introducing the versatile multidiscipline Leonardo Dual 45 and Leonardo Mini Diode Laser Range. Brought to you by Biolitech, working in conjunction with Mr. Altaf Shamsdin, urology consultant at Charing Cross Hospital, London, UK. Mr. Sachin Agrawal and Mr. Philip James, urology consultants at St. Peter's Hospital, Chertsey, UK. We started this Tula procedure in 2011. For the past seven years, we have treated more than 1,200 patients. We call the procedure transurethral laser ablation. This was predominantly designed around the versatility of the laser and its applications and the fact that we could use it and we have used it across multiple areas of urology, both from urethral strictures to bladder cancers to the bladder neck to the upper tract and the kidney. It's actually a laser that was used in vascular surgery, so it had a very good hemostatic property. Um, and this came out of uh, the previous lasers we were using, such as the Holmium, and you couldn't quite control bleeding that well with them. So occasionally you had a case where you had to convert them to a general anaesthetic, and most of those procedures were being done in theatre under local. The, most of the patients are elderly with a lot of comorbidities, and the non-muscle invasive bladder tumour Normally, the recurrent rates are quite high, and the, these elderly patients have to undergo several procedures under general anesthetics, um, at least two to three times in a year. And uh, with the patients concerned, uh, when doing the general anesthetic procedure, we tried different types of lasers, and we found the diode laser 1470 was more effective the diode was thought to be the best from our perspective in terms of its depth of penetration with tissue being one to two millimeters. It also offers then the second frequency, which allows us to treat slightly higher risk or more aggressive bladder tumors more safely. We restricted for non-muscle invasive bladder tumors, where we know the diagnosis. The other indications are um, urethral warts, uh, which are uh, very well uh, treated with this type of laser, which responds very well. There's no, not much of recurrence rate at all. Um, and if the multidisciplinary meeting decides uh, that TULA to be offered for those patients with higher risk uh, bladder tumor, like grade three and T1 uh, patients, and those patients who have refused cystectomy, and who have had a failure with the other intravesical chemotherapy agents like mitomycin and BCG, and, uh, and those who failed to respond to the heated um, uh, mitomycin treatment. So these patients uh, who have no other uh, mode of treatment, um, then we, uh, we accept this patient and treat the patients. Um, some patients have uh, incidence of bleeding problems um, after the radiotherapy uh, due to the uh, multiple areas of uh, uh, bleeding areas in the bladder called radiation cystitis. Um, this also be very well treated with the TULA. I mean, only contraindication, I, what I think is that if you're treating the tumors close to the uteric orifice, one has to be very careful uh, because uh, the thermal energy can go to the uteric orifice and can cause damage to the uh, uteric orifice and uh, result in the stricture. But I'm, uh, I've treated uh, different type of tumors close to the uteric orifice without any um, uh, further sequelae. Um, the other contraindication, if the patient has uh, bleeding, active bleeding, then the uh, vision is poor and then you can't treat the tumor effectively. So that these are the two contraindications for TULA. The procedure is simple and straightforward. So the patient comes in, have a flexible cystoscopy, we find the area of um, tumor and take a biopsy and treat the tumor at the same time. The additional equipment that we keep is the TULA machine, the laser fiber, we do keep a port seal device, which is very similar to what we use for stone procedures in the theatre to allow easy passage of the fibre, and we also have biopsy forceps available. 
So the procedure essentially is involving passing the telescope into the bladder, taking a sample, uh, sending that off, and then passing the laser fibre through the port seal and scope to ablate the tumour. The treatment does not require many nursing personnel. We have two nurses to work with. One hands over the equipment, the other one controls the uh, laser machine. Because it's a much simpler procedure, and essentially a natural evolution of the hematuria clinic, it reduces the staffing requirements and you create theatre capacity, which are additional opportunity benefits. After the initial uh, tool-up procedure, the patient is followed up in three months' time to assess the recurrence status. If there's no recurrence, uh, they're followed up according to the departmental guidelines. The prophylaxis of the procedure is uh, around, hopefully, a pre-procedure urine culture. So if there's a specific antibody, we would want to have treated that infection. Uh, if we have previous sensitivities, then we would use gentamicin as a single dose intramuscularly, and for the majority of patients, we currently give ciprofloxacin as a single dose, 500 milligrams, just prior to the procedure, one hour. Uh, in the future, again, it's something we will look at actually as to whether we need prophylaxis at all. Normally, patients who are on anticoagulants, they're advised to stop warfarin three days or five days before the general anesthetic procedure or any other laser procedures. Our experience is that we can easily ablate tumours without bleeding. I would restrict it to people who've had some experience in using the laser, and I would also restrict it to patients in which there's a contraindication to stopping the antiplatelet agent. The other applications that evolved out of the use of the diodes have come from our experiences from bladder cancer management, and we have treated urethral strictures in the urethra, uh, we have treated bladder necks in terms of bladder neck incision procedures, and we've also used the diode within the upper tract, so treating superficial urethral cancer within the kidney. Uh, one of the most exciting applications will be, hopefully, to the primary treatment of bladder cancer in the future. With the new uh, laser machine, where you have two wavelengths, one is 980, which is a cutting laser, and the 1470, which is an ablative laser. With combination of these uh, two lasers, we can initially resect with uh, the depth of the tumor with 980 wavelength laser, and then the rest of the tumor can be treated with um, 1470 diode laser. So you as a patient should hopefully be able to come to a clinic, have your check flexible SOSPI as a diagnostic test, but hopefully then move on to have a biopsy and a treatment which you can physically watch. This obviously depends on the type of tumour and its suitability, and it's subject to future research. There are several steps setting up a new service. The first is going to your new technology board, and also business planning with someone from your department. There will be a number of changes that need to be made, so the environment in terms of the room being made laser safe, and the laser committee and the trust will help with this. Uh, and then procuring the machine and starting with uh, the relevant training in place. From an organisational perspective, even though there's reduced income, the procedure is more cost effective because you don't have the general anaesthetic costs, the additional staffing costs, so you actually start to make some money as a department. You also get opportunity benefits from a shift uh, in terms of creating theatre capacity and the staff that you would have freed up. From the machine and cost setup perspective, it's economical. The machine will pay for itself within six to nine months, depending on the number of procedures your centre performs. With regards to the patient experience with Tula, so far all of our results and from our questionnaires, it's been excellent. Three quarters of people have experienced no pain whatsoever. The quarter that actually experienced some pain, they reported it as absolutely minimal. And all patients who have undergone a laser ablation have opted to go through it again. People have been having a really good experience of the urology centre coming in for their procedure, much less indisposition and problems compared to coming in for a general anaesthetic, particularly when this patient cohort are taken into account. Uh, with regards to the urology department as a whole, um, we've been identifying patients who are suitable through our MDT process um, and it's been making these 
difficult decisions for comorbid and elderly patients a lot easier now that we have a suitable treatment in our arsenal. For further product information, demonstrations or support, please contact ProMed Biolitech by visiting www.biolitech.com.